This is a very important podcast update about predictions of what's going to happen. And I'm recording this right after the confirmation of uh, Brett Kavanaugh, or at least the, the agreement that he's going to be confirmed. It's now essentially a done deal. And immediately after that took place, of course, the radical leftist erupted into almost mob violence all across the United States Capitol building. It shows that they have no tolerance for any kind of a, a legislative process or judicial process that they don't control. It shows you, it underscores what I've been saying for a long time, that leftists are not qualified to participate in civil society. They scream and they engage in mob violence and mob rule attempts, and they, they shout at people and they mob people in public and they threaten violence and they send you know, poison in the mail to the offices of U.S. senators. And this is the way the left operates. They are descending into a, just a, basically a party of terrorism. The Democrat Party is becoming the party of mob rule and incivility and terrorism and violence. Now, as I predicted before, there are two trigger events that will really set off the left. This confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh is the first of two. So the first of two is now complete. And we're already starting to see the madness of the left. The second trigger event is the midterm elections. The midterm elections, if Republicans hold the House and keep the Senate, and it looks very likely they'll not only keep the Senate, but gain seats in the Senate, then this will be the second trigger event that will unleash basically Civil War-style chaos among leftists, and they will unleash terror cells to run around and, and try to wage mass executions and assassinations of certain people. Uh, conservatives, I've talked about this before, they will try to murder conservative senators, they will try to murder uh, Supreme Court justices who are conservative, they'll try to murder Brett Kavanaugh. I have no, no illusions about that. They're going to try to kill people because this is what they're coming to. And we've seen the signs, we've seen them mailing white powder to, to Ted Cruz's office in Houston. We've seen the, the doxing by a Democrat staffer in Congress, and he was arrested, by the way. I think his last name is Cosco, and he's been charged with like eight felony crimes, and he doxed these conservative senators in order to share their personal information with kill teams, uh, left-wing kill teams that I've been told are going to be uh, ordered or unleashed or activated, you might say that's a better term, to go kill certain intended targets. And the doxing is part of that kill team operation. So somebody in Congress, a staffer, doxes people, and then the kill teams take action and they go raid those homes at, you know, three in the morning. And then they kill the families and they kill the senators and they kill everybody. This is what the left is coming to. So, so we have now passed the first trigger point which again was the Kavanaugh confirmation. Uh, get ready. Hold on your hat, folks. Now, the, my prediction is that the second trigger point, right now, it's about a 50-50 chance that, that conservatives hold that seat. So that's not nearly as sure of a thing as Kavanaugh getting confirmed, which I had put at about an 80% chance in my most recent podcast. But the... Conservatives holding the House is a 50-50 shot right now. And you may wonder, well, why do I think that's 50-50? What's my reasoning behind that? Well, and also just to remind you, I accurately predicted the victory of President Trump uh, before the 2016 election took place. And, you know, I'm on the record accurately predicting many, many other things, including the crash of crypto coins. They're down 70 to 75 percent this year after my prediction and warning last year. So I have, a, I have a very good track record, not perfect, but, but overall very good uh, about predicting these things. So my thinking on this is that, number one, the Democrats are energized to go out and vote in ways that they weren't in 2016, because the media was lying to the Democrat voters and saying, ah, oh, you got this in the bag. You don't even really need to vote. Hillary's going to win this. What did they say? 98% chance, right? That was the New York Times, I think, their prediction. So a lot of Democrats just stayed home. And then they lost the election. Well, that's not going to happen in the midterm. Democrats are going to go out and vote in record numbers. There's no doubt about that. You can count on it. 
However, at the same time, Republicans have now been incredibly energized by the attacks and smears of Brett Kavanaugh and the tactics used by these left-wing senators like Dianne Feinstein and, and others, Cory Booker in particular, and the attacks by the media. These have generated so much outrage in the minds of conservatives that now conservatives are really, really riled up to go out and vote and defend conservatism against these lies and smears of the left. In my mind, these two things cancel each other out. So both sides are roughly equally energized, in my view. Now, remember that Republicans can lose 20 seats. I think, I think the actual number is 21 or something very close to that. So they could lose 20 seats and still hold the House. Now, there's no doubt they're going to lose many seats in California. They could lose five seats in California alone. That's probably a pretty good estimate of what will happen. Because California has gone off the deep end. California's radical left-wing communism at this point. So Republicans will lose seats in California. Will they lose more than 20 seats nationwide? Again, I give that a 50-50 chance. So just keep that in mind on election night that Republicans can lose 20 seats and still keep the House. And if that happens, the media will say, well, gosh, they've lost 20 seats. What a bunch of losers. But they kept the House, you see. And that's really what matters for the next two years. Now, if they lose less than 20 seats, then obviously they, they hold the House quite strongly. And if they gain seats in the Senate, they, they could gain three, four, five, even as many as six seats in the Senate, although that's not the most likely outcome. It's likely for them to gain roughly three, two to three seats gained in the Senate and possibly holding the House. So that's where things stand, in my view, right now. This is subject to change because we've got, what do we have, 30, roughly 30 days to go before the November elections. And in 30 days, there's a lot that's going to happen. So let me speak to that here for a second. The confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh to the U.S. Supreme Court provides support for President Trump to now get much more aggressive at demanding the release of documents from the deep state. Why does that, that allow him to do that? Because if anything, if any of his executive actions are questioned and pushed up to the Supreme Court for some kind of an emergency hearing, then he will have that five to four majority of conservative Supreme Court justices. Now, it's not clear to me on which day Kavanaugh gets seated at the U.S. Supreme Court. I do know that it is traditional that Supreme Court jurists are not allowed to vote on cases for which they have not heard the oral arguments. So Kavanaugh may be seated on the court and be active on the court and yet not be able to cast his vote on certain cases that have already been heard by the other justices slash jurists. I'm sort of using that term interchangeably. So that's something to keep in mind. He could be on the court and he could hear emergency orders even if he can't vote on certain cases that have, that have already had oral arguments delivered. But it's not clear to me what day he's going to be seated. This is key. If he's seated on the court in the next week, then that provides ample time for President Trump to demand the release of deep state documents such as the FBI 302s and the FISA warrant documents showing that Barack Obama and others inside the FBI criminally conspired to spy on Trump campaign officials. If those documents come out, before the election, and mostly in an unredacted form, then I think it's over for the Democrats for the midterms, because I think the outcry of the incredible cheating and criminal activity of the deep state from the FBI, the DOJ under Obama, and Obama himself, plus his attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, the outcry will be so huge that I think at that point, then conservatives might leap up to something like a 75-80% chance of holding the House. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that happens. The key right now is to understand that with Kavanaugh confirmed to the court, this provides a very strong strategic advantage to President Trump to demand and, and re-demand the release of unredacted deep state documents, the declassification and release of those documents. So you should expect the Trump effort and even the effort of conservative senators to shift in that direction very quickly. Perhaps by the time you're hearing this, in fact, it usually takes a couple of days for these podcasts to get published. It's going to go to the deep state documents. And then 
it could very well end up with Republicans holding the the House in the midterms. And at that point, boom, the left activates the kill teams, the terror teams, the civil war. Then it's it's it basically collapses very quickly, I think, into a lot a lot of violence in the streets and bombing government buildings and things like that, attempted assassinations. So we'll just have to see. Obviously, I pray for America. I pray for peace. I pray for civility. But it's clear that the left will not participate in civil society. It's clear that the mindset of leftists is mob rule, terrorism, violence, and irrationality. And they simply have no place. That, that philosophy has no place in the future of our society. We need to defeat Democrats at every election and eliminate their political power over us. So when you go out to vote this November, vote straight Republican this year. Straight Republican vote. Do it. Join me in doing it. I'm doing it. We're all doing it. Because we cannot allow Democrats to have any power. Or they will abuse it, and they will abuse us, and they will destroy these United States of America. It's very clear. Thanks for listening. Mike Adams here. You can hear my podcast at, well, let's see what's, what's the best place. You can go to healthrangerreport.com and hear them there, or you can go to reel.video and look for my channel there called Counter Thing. Thanks for listening. Learn more at healthrangerreport.com. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab-verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.